hey, remember that time that uh, Abraham was told by God to sacrifice his only son, you know, make him carry the wood for his own fire, carry the knife, stabby stab. It's one of those really challenging stories in the Bible to talk about because uh, most of us wouldn't. Um, it's not a brag. It's not a flex. It's just sort of the reality that if the sky opened up and spoke to me and said, go kill your kid, I would tell the sky no. And it's held in front of us as this, this great act of faith on Abraham's part uh, that really only makes ours feel not only more insignificant, but it really only increases the worry because sometimes God takes away the things that he gives. And I think that might actually be the reckoning of this story that we usually put in the wrong place. You see, more often than not, we teach this uh, story to little kids and tell them how much faith Abraham had and tell them that they should have faith like he did, but they haven't lost. I don't think that this story is for them. I actually think that this is the story that should be for people who are on the other side of loss, the people who are already struggling with the God who gave something and then took it back. I think that this is a story that is set apart for those who are struggling with the God who claimed something, someone who is altogether too important. There we get a glimpse not of Abraham's great faith, but that the name of the mountain is true. The Lord will provide. You see, Abraham, for all of his great faith, hoped in this. He knew that Isaac would somehow come back down the mountain. He even tells it to the guys that are with him before he goes up the, up the path. He, he says, we will return to you, both of us. And he doesn't know how exactly that's going to happen. I don't actually think that he is looking for a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. I think he is actually looking for the resurrection of the body. It's the hope of the faith that we have had since the fall. God would send his son into the world to bleed, to die, to rise, that we who die would rise as well. This was a hope even in the Old Testament, the resurrection of the body. You see, it's not a story of Abraham's great faith that somehow spared him from ever having to taste something bad. It is a story of, of reckoning with loss and then looking forward in, in frustration, in fear, in pain, and recognizing that in the end, the mountain is still the mountain. The Lord provides. You see, Abraham went up that, that mountain, not sort of saying, if I just believe enough, I won't actually have to do it. But, but rather, this is a son who is taken from me, and one day I will see him again. That walk up the mountain was a walk of loss. And for everybody who sits on this side of loss, everybody who looks to the resurrection of the body and says it is still too far away, we can look backwards to Abraham on this side of Abraham and say, the Lord does provide. It is sometimes painful. It is sometimes through death and resurrection, but he provides. If we're willing to sort of wrestle with Abraham and Isaac on the other side of the veil, then for those who have lost and who are looking, it becomes a message of hope that even in the in-between, that slow path up the mountain where things are missing and things are wrong, there can still be hope because this doesn't hinge on how much faith you have in a better tomorrow or somehow getting out of something bad, but in God's mercy that provides on the other side of death, a resurrection.